thank God he's been faithful to us. God has been good. His mercy endures forever. Let us press on tough time, but with God we are going to make it. Somebody say amen. The Bible says that them that know they are God, they shall do exploit. Only those that will know they are God. There are times when you cannot survive as a Christian when you don't know you are God. There are times you can't stand when you don't know him. But the Bible says those that know they are God, they will do exploits. As you keep on trusting in him, as you keep on believing in him, he keeps on telling us, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. There are times things don't go in the manner that we desire. But every time we look up unto him, we are very sure that he's ordering our step and in due time, he will lift us up. This season we are sharing about the hand of God. We've been guided by the text in the book of First Peter chapter 5, verse 6, that humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that in due time he will lift you up. There are times you feel like you are under suppression or oppression. You are under a certain yoke or you have been brought down by something. If you know your God, a time will come, your God will lift you up. But if you don't know your God, you will think that God has left you, he has abandoned you. You will think that you are alone in this matter. My prayer for everybody this season, as we humble ourselves before God, let us strive to know our God. I pray for you every day that God will bless you God will keep you. He will show himself strong on our behalf. He who keeps you, he neither sleep, he neither slumber. Somebody clap to our Father and give him praise. Therefore, I welcome you to sit down and I welcome those who are following us on various platforms, the social media, that we may be able to continue in the word of God. Today, first service, my sharing is on the hand of God. The hand of God that performs miracles, signs, and wonders. I want us to discuss and to encourage each other on the hand of God that performs miracles, signs, and wonders. Remember, I've started by saying, those that know they are God, they shall do exploits. And I go through this series so that we may be able to know our God, even in this time. That our faith in him may be strengthened and may be built. My main objective is knowing our God so that we may benefit from that knowledge of God. That we shall do exploit. The hand of God that is able to perform miracles, signs, and wonders. Last Sunday, I read, the same, I read the same text that I'm reading this Sunday. It's not easy to use the same text for two Sundays when we have a big Bible. The book of Acts chapter 4. I used it in the second service. Acts chapter 4. My emphasis is verse 30. But I want to start with verse 23 so that we may understand, we may grasp. The Bible says, and being let go... They went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God, which have made heaven and earth, and the sea and all that in them is. Who by the mouth of your servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth should up stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For over truth against your holy child, Jesus, whom you have anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever your hand and your counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done 
by the name of your holy child Jesus. Verse 31, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. The God that is able to perform miracles, signs, and wonders. And this was the best scenario that the Bible gives us. They were living in a time that there was a lot of persecution and tribulations to the level that it was hard to determine where, whether God is there. And that's why at some point, David went through some, some things in the Bible. The children of God went through some things in the Bible. The Bible says, until the heathen, the heathen are people who don't believe in God, until they see, and where is their God? And where is their God? Sometimes you experience things in your life, in your family, with your family, in your nation, until people may ask you, and where is your God? There are times even yourself, personally, you go through things, you pray, you cry, you seek God, you do all things that you need to do and you think you're supposed to do. And God is so silent to the level that you ask yourself, where is my God? There are many occasions that even people have doubted the existence of God over their lives. There are times you go through things until you think maybe God left you. Or maybe God is no longer interested in you. Or maybe this story of God was just but a story, but it is not reality. There are things that can go on in somebody's life to the level that people would say, uh -uh, the way this person is going through this thing, maybe has done a certain bad thing. That's why God has abandoned him. This was the situation of the disciples of Jesus. After he had worked with them for three years, performing signs, wonders, and miracles, and many people had followed them because of what he was doing, then suddenly Jesus dies and resurrected and ascended into heaven. And these men of God decide to continue with the work that their master was doing. But the enemy stretched forth his hand and began to persecute them, to kill them, to scatter them, to defeat them. The purpose was to challenge their faith. And I want to tell somebody here today, many things that we are going through in life, the purpose is to challenge our faith. Our faith is challenged, whether we can stand in God, whether we can trust God, whether we can stick with God, or we are going to leave God. The purpose of whatever they were going through, the reason was their faith was being challenged. And that's why when you read even the histories after, after the seasons of the apostles, when you read the histories, they would be arrested. They would be thrown in stadiums with somebody like Nero and would allow bulls to come and kill them. Some would be burned, some would be cut. And they were asked, you have to deny God so that you may live. If you don't deny God, you are going to die. They were given choices between their, their own lives and their faith. Their faith was being challenged. And the season that we are experiencing, this season of COVID-19, it is to challenge our faith. When you don't have money, and you used to have money, when your job is going away, as you are just seeing with your own eyes, praying, but it is going away, when you cannot even afford to take your children to school, yet you used to do it, when you see things are just going the direction that they are going, your loved one taken to the hospital, you are praying, they are taken to ICU, you are praying, they go to coma, you are praying, they die, it is our faith that is being challenged. Somebody say amen. The faith of the saints. As a pastor, this season like never before, my faith has been challenged. My faith has been challenged. I've seen people losing jobs. I've seen people losing their families in this season. I've seen people closing their business in this season. Faithful people, faithful titers, faith, faithful Christians, but things are just happening. I have gone to the hospital to pray with people. Some, I'm called, they are sick. They have contracted disease. I pray with them. They are taken to the hospital. We pray together. They, are, they move to HDU. We pray together. They move to ICU. We pray together. They move to coma. We pray together. They die as if the prayer was escorting them to the last end. And my faith has been challenged. 
And I know that your faith in one way or another has been challenged. Actually, if there is something that the coronavirus came to do to humanity was to challenge the faith of Christians and the faith of church. That's why you would hear people complaining and say, why they are, are they doing this to pubs? And they, are not, and, they, and they are treating church in this manner. Why are they doing this to politicians and they are treating church in this manner? Why are they closing church and the pubs and the nightclubs are not closed? Supermarkets and markets are not closed. Politicians are doing their business. Why church? Why church? Why church? The reason is, the reason can be answered not by them. It can be answered by that. Our faith is being challenged. Somebody say amen. Our faith is being challenged. Your faith to give in this time. Your salary, you have nothing, but the, the, the church is giving us a pay bill number. We send our tithe, we send our offering. Yet we don't have money. Yet my job is gone. Yet I have a patient in the hospital. Somebody is asking for tithe. Somebody is asking for an offering. I am feeling so weak. I'm so discouraged. Yet, somebody is expecting me to come to church on Sunday. Everybody is coughing around here. Yet, somebody tells me, just come and trust God that you will not be sick. Your faith is being challenged. And I pray the prayer of Jesus that when he comes, he may find faith here on earth. In Jesus' name, somebody clap to our Father and give him praise. That we may not lose our faith at such a time as this. Sometimes all these other things may be taken away, except our faith will be what will keep us standing. In the midst of tragedy, in the midst of pain, in the midst of tribulation, what can only keep us to go through this season is our faith. And even before I go into the Bible, I want to tell you today, this season will end. But will you still be having your faith? Somebody say amen. By the time it is declared, no masks, everything is restored back to normal. Economy is okay. Church is okay. Will we still be having our faith? Or we will begin to refine our faith? Because there is a higher possibility that many people will lose their faith. The passion for God, that desire, that excitement for Christ, that trust for him, that zeal and fire is going off day by day by day because men are losing faith. And when you consider the number of people that were following Jesus until the time he dies, then the time of persecution, some ran away and they left their faith. When they were given a choice between what they believe in and the survival of their lives, some decided to follow the survival of their lives and to abandon what they believe in. They died spiritually. They gave up on God, who is the maker of heaven and earth. They gave up on the belief system that has kept them trusting and hoping in the Lord and at the end they give up and even they die because they have nothing to believe in. And this is where we are now. I pray may God increase our faith in Jesus' mighty name. May God strengthen us in the place of faith that we'll keep on trusting him every day. We close our eyes to pray. We open our eyes. One day when we close our eyes to pray, things will be bad. But when we open our eyes after prayer, we shall find that things have become back to normal, even in the mighty name of Jesus. There are times you'll close your eyes when things are so bad around you because you have seen a lot of bad things. Crying to God, praying that God may change things. And I pray for somebody that one day you will open that eyes from prayer and you'll find a miracle all around you that God has answered your prayers and things are happening for your good. Somebody clap to our Father and give him praise in the name of Jesus. Let us not lose hope and faith. Keep on believing. Keep on trusting. Keep on waiting. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we can give our Father a clap offering here. We can give him praise. That's why I want to speak about the hand of God that is able to perform signs, wonders, and miracles. The same situation that was there in the days of wilderness when Moses is walking with the children of Israel. Some are falling down in the wilderness and die. Some are beaten by scorpions and they die. Some are killed by people and they die. And it was hopeless all around them. Things were not happening. They were not moving. There was no breakthrough. There was a lot of stagnation. There was no a way out. There was a lot of stoppage in that wilderness. Their hope had gone. Somebody's hope to come out of poverty is gone. Somebody's hope to get into her own family is gone. Somebody's hope to get into her own job is gone. That was the situation with the children of Israel. It was like they had been surrounded to die in the wilderness. I pray and declare to somebody, you shall not die in the wilderness in the mighty name of Jesus. There shall be a breakthrough out of wilderness in Jesus' mighty name. Wilderness is not your portion. You don't have a title there for the wilderness because the Lord shall deliver you. Somebody clap to our Father and give him a better praise here today in the name of Jesus Christ. That was the situation. And this prompted Moses to tell him that, Father, if indeed you are with us and your presence is with us, make us to look unique, to look different by something that you are doing in the midst of us. Do something that we cannot be treated, we cannot be assessed, we cannot be analyzed, just like any other person. And this is the prayer that we will make today once again. We want God to do something that is distinguished, that is so unique, that is so different, that is so specific and personal to us that people will say, indeed, this is their God that has done this for them because it is impossible for men to do it for themselves in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, somebody clap to him and give him a better praise here in the name of Jesus. That's why... In this day, after they had been arrested, they had been beaten by the, by the police of that day before the council of people, old men being beaten before the council of people, they were so angry because they knew they are God. And when they came out of it, they were so angry and they were, so, and they were, they were almost despairing. We've just been beaten. We've just been abused. We've just been insulted just in front of everybody because of this God. We want to know indeed if this God that we are representing is alive or is not. If he is not, therefore, we are doing it in vain. But if God, this God is alive, we want him to do something different, unique, so that they may know that this God is there. I pray for somebody that may God do something in your life so that they may know that the God that you are worshipping, the God that you are serving is alive and is with you. Somebody clap to our Father and even give him praise in the mighty name of Jesus. They tested God. They tried God. They challenged God. They said to themselves, if we are preaching God, if we are talking about God, then we are beaten like small children and nothing is happening. These people will think that our God is dead. Therefore, they went into a prayer and they told God, look at what they are doing. Look at the way they have treated us. Look at the way they are fighting us. It's like they are saying you are not there and if you are not there, you are not able to help us. Therefore, Father, stretch forth your hand to heal, perform miracles, signs and wonders so that they may believe in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody clap to our Father and declare a better amen here. It was a prayer that was challenging God to do something extraordinary. And this is the time of such prayer. This is the time that somebody needs to pray and tell God, do something extraordinary that my children will believe that the God that I pray is a real God. Do something extraordinary that my family members that are doubting what I am doing with you will be able to know that you are God. This is the time that the church may gather once again and make a prayer that Lord do something that will make the nations of the world to know that
that our God is there, our God is alive, and our God can move. They were challenged to make a prayer. One of the joy that I normally have during tough seasons of my life is it normally challenges me to go into a place of prayer. Somebody say amen. While others are complaining and scattering, it always pushes me, challenges me to go into a place of prayer. And I tell God, Father, if you are still with me, Father, if you are still present, Father, if you are still committed, do something extraordinary to prove your presence in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, may somebody celebrate our Father and give him a better praise today. That's why I speak about that hand that is able to perform signs, wonders, and miracles. And the Bible says after this prayer, there was a great shaking. There were a lot of miracles. Many people were healed in the midst of them. Things just happened until many believed and joined them. You can imagine when the church is being persecuted and people are joining that church. When the people who are, joining, uh, are in that church are being killed, but some people are still joining that church. When the people of this church, their businesses are taken away, but some people are still joining that church because of signs, wonders, and miracles that God was able to do in their midst, he proved his presence in the midst of them. May God prove his presence in your life. May God prove his commitment over your life. May God prove his covenant together with you. Clap to our Father and give him praise this morning. He's a God of signs and wonders and miracles. He stretches forth his hand to perform signs, wonders, and miracles. Indeed, they will say that this is the hand of their God in the mighty name of Jesus. When your business survives in this time, when your marriage survives in this time, when your children succeed in this time, when you prosper in this time, when your job survives in this time, the people will say, indeed, their God is God. And that is my prayer for all of us here that they will say, indeed, their God is God. Because God is in the business of proving himself, even on our behalf, in the name of Jesus. I want you to know today that God does things with two intentions. Every time God does anything in the midst of people, he, does, he has two intentions. Two intentions. Every time he heals you, he blesses you, he does anything to you, he has two intentions. The intention number one as to why God can do anything in your life, the intention number one is that he may get the glory. His first intention is that he may glorify himself. That's why Jesus tells them, this disease is not unto death, but it is because God wants to glorify himself. If God blesses this church today, it is because he's glorifying himself. If God blesses your family, blesses your marriage, blesses your children, it is to glorify himself. That's why he normally takes things that are weak, things that are useless, things that have been defeated, things that are living in shame, and make a glory in them so that men may glorify the name of the living God in the mighty name of Jesus. He would heal the leper because nobody was able to heal the leper so as to glorify himself. He would open the eyes of the blind because nobody was able to do that so as to glorify himself. He would make the lame walk. Nobody was able to do that so as to glorify himself. Therefore, the main purpose of God doing anything supernatural or miracle in any place or in our lives is to glorify him. That's why there are times you come in your life, you need to make a prayer and tell God, Father, glorify yourself. Even in this situation, glorify yourself. Even in my life, glorify yourself. To glorify himself is to make people know that he is God, is to make people know that he is a great God, a powerful God, a mighty God, a stronger God, a capable God. Somebody celebrate our Father and give him praise today in the mighty name of Jesus. If today you are sick and we pray for you and you get healed, it is because God wants to glorify himself. May you begin to create situations that you will allow God to glorify himself. 
That's why you hear some people who know God tell you, let us see, God will glorify himself in this situation. You just say whatever you are saying, but God will glorify himself in this situation. He will make his name known. He will make people praise him. He will make nations fear him, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, intention of God to do anything in our lives. His intention for him to do anything in our life is that so that men may believe in him. The reason is men may believe in him. That's why we publish things of God. When God heals you, you shout and you say, God has healed me so that men may believe him. When you get a job, you just don't do it secretly. You shout and say, ah, I waited on the Lord for a job. He has blessed me with a new job so that men may believe in him. When you escape danger, accident, death, you come and say, I almost died that day, but the Lord delivered me so that men may believe in him. The intention of his blessing over your life is a preaching avenue to turn the hearts of men towards him in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessings of God, miracles of God, they are not a private affair between you and God. It is a public affair between God and the people using you. You are only but an agent of God to be known by many people. Hey, somebody say amen. Are you getting me? It's never a private affair. It is a public affair between God and people. You are just used there as a vessel to make it happen. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord make you to make use you to make people believe Him. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody clap to our Father and give Him a better praise today. In the mighty name of Jesus, that is the intention of God that people may believe. The Bible says when God did some miracles, many people joined the apostles. When Jesus healed people, many people followed Him and believed in Him. It is easy for people to believe God when he has done something to somebody. When he gives you a job, yet you don't look like you're supposed to have a job, many people will say, we want to follow your God. When he heals somebody that has been sick for a long time, many people will say, we want that God that healed this person. We want to believe him. I pray that may you make people look for God through what he has done for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is my prayer. This is my desire. That Father, through the things that you are doing in our lives, many people will believe you. When he lifts the lowly from the dust and he causes them to sit with princes in high places, people begin to believe him. When he calls a poor man from the darkness and he causes him to shine in front of the princess, people begin to believe in him. When he removes the sinner from the darkness and the dens of sin, and he pulls him into the light of salvation, packages him and uses him, people begin to believe in him. The intention of God for blessing you this week, the intention of God for opening your door this week, the intention of God for opening your family this week, delivering you, it is that people may be able to believe in him. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody clap to our Father. If you believe me, somebody give him a praise here today. Hey, somebody praise our God. Somebody praise our God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. A God of miracles, signs, and wonders. He stretched forth his hand to do it because of that reason. Signs is one of the things that God normally uses to communicate. When he does miracles, he uses it to communicate. When he does wonders, he uses it to communicate. That's why we pray that stretch your hand, heal, do miracles, signs, and wonders that they may believe. Communicate with them by your actions that are not natural. It's a good prayer for a Christian. Tell God, communicate with them. Tell them by doing a miracle, by doing a, mir a sign, by doing a wonder. Tell them, Lord, by blessing me. Tell them, my Father, by healing me.
tell them today by opening my door. You can use your situation to glorify the name of the Lord. Even in Jesus' mighty name, clap to our Father in the name of Jesus. Tell them, Lord. God, he performs signs by his hands. The reason as to why he does these things of signs, it is to indicate to people that his presence is with us. Every time you see a sign around, it is a way that God tells people about his presence. When he heals a sick person here, and then a sick person jumps and shouts, God has announced, I am present in the midst of you. When you see him blessing somebody here today from nowhere, and somebody gets a blessing, we are saying the presence of the Lord is here. The reason for sign is to indicate his presence. The Bible says when the ark of the covenant of God was taken into the house of Abedadom, it did not disturb David until the Lord blessed the household of Abedadom. And it was told David that the house of Abedadom has been blessed because of the ark of covenant of God of Israel that resides there. God gave a sign of his presence in that house by blessing them. May God do a sign of his presence in your life by blessing you in Jesus' mighty name. That's what he did. He gave a sign that I am here. That's why they are blessed. The Bible says when Jesus visited the house of Peter, many people who were sick were brought to him and they were healed. And the mother of Peter, who was sick of fever, was also healed. And the people marveled because of the healing that was taking place in that house because the presence of God was there. The healing that was taking place in that house was a sign of a presence of God. May God bring healing in this nation, in this land, in everybody around here as a sign of his presence in the midst of us. Somebody clap to our father. Somebody give him praise in the mighty name of Jesus. When Elijah left Samaria, it was famine. And he went into a house of a widow in Zarephath. And the Bible says for the three years that he stayed in that house, there was provision. Every day there was oil, there was flour. Every day that family would eat when other family were lacking food. It was God giving a sign to them that I am with this man of God and I am in this house because this man of God is in this house, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Every time you see extraordinary provisions in extraordinary time of your life, God is announcing his presence in your life, his presence around you. May the Lord announce his presence by providing to somebody's life in Jesus' mighty name. You can clap to our Father and even give him praise here today in Jesus' mighty name. He announced, everybody would say, uh -uh, the widow of Zenephah is just a widow with a small son, but we are dying of hunger. But this lady is okay because a man of God resides in that house. It is a sign indicating his presence. May God give us a sign indicating his presence in the midst of us in Jesus' name. How will they know that he's with you unless there is a sign? Moses told the Lord, if you are not going to make us unique from other people, how would they know that we are your people and you are with us? If you don't make us different, release a certain sign that they will know that you are present in the midst of us. When they were walking in the wilderness of Kadesh, when they were going through trouble in Mount Sinai, the Bible says every day there was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night as a sign that God was going together with them. Somebody say amen. They would see the cloud. You know, I want to tell somebody here, God never walks with anybody secretly. It is never a private matter between you and God. It is a public matter between God and the people using you. He always walks with you announcing that I am with this man, I am with this woman. This is the sign that shows he is with us. Somebody clap to our Father and give him praise today in Jesus' mighty name. 
You cannot tell us that I have God. We have to see it. It is not your business to tell us that God is with you. We have to see it by signs around your life. Are we together, church of God? God of signs. That's why when, when Dathan and Korah challenged Aaron, Moses called them and told them, we want God to give a sign that is, is with either Dathan, Korah, or with Aaron. And they asked them, bring your staffs. And the three of them brought their staff. And Moses placed the staff in the tabernacle of God. And the Bible says, after a period of time, they went to pick the dry staff, and they discovered that the staff of Aaron was budding. A dry staff budding. Green leaves. May your staff bud green leaves in the mighty name of Jesus. That which God has given you, may it begin to bud until they say, the Lord is with you. Somebody celebrate our father. And then when they saw it, Moses brought it and showed them and said, look at the sign. Yours is as dry as it entered there and the one of Aaron is budding. The sign that God is with Aaron. May God give a sign that is with somebody here, even in Jesus' mighty name. He gives a sign. Stretch forth your hand and perform miracles, signs and wonders. A sign to show that your presence is with us. It was all over the Bible. He would always give a sign that is with people. Let us refuse to walk dry and tell people, do you know that I am a man of God? Do you know that God is with me? Do you know that I pray? Do you know that I fast? It is not our business. Our business is to make good relationship with him. His business is to give a sign. And the business of the public is to see the sign and say, God is with them in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. May you receive a sign today. May his hand work a sign over your life, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Every time he gives a sign, it is to indicate that he, is com he has commitment with us. He is committed to us. The sign come to show that God is committed to us. He has made a commitment. Actually, I love the sign that God said when he destroyed the generation of the season of Noah with flood. He gave a sign of the rainbow. And he told them, Every time there is a flood and you see the rainbow, you need to know that I will not again destroy humanity with this kind of destruction. That sign was a commitment. It was a covenant. It was a commitment. And every time God just gives a sign, it is a commitment. He, he would tell the children of Israel, every time you see the cloud rising up, you also rise up and go. Every time you see it settling down, you also settle there until it rises up again. This sign shows you that I am committed to your provision. I am committed to your protection. I am committed to your preservation. I am committed to your promotion, even in Jesus' mighty name. Every time good things happen to us, God is using it to give you a sign that he is still with me. He is committed with that's why David came into a place in the Bible and say, I have been young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor is seed begging for bread. That the provision that I am experiencing is a sign of God's commitment to my life. That's why he would say in the book of Psalms 91 that he will give his angels charge over you to, put you, to keep you up lest you dash your seat upon a stone. It is a commitment that God has made that I am protecting you, preserving you from harm. It is a sign that I have a commitment over your life. God has commitment over our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Some people would say, as long as I am here, God, this thing will not happen. As long as you are still with me. If it does not happen, it is a sign of God's commitment over your life. 
Hey, are we together, people of God? Can we celebrate him? Can we clap to him? Can we give him praise today? It is a sign. It is a sign of commitment. Sign shows the commitment of God. I am sick. Others who are sick, they have died, all of them. I have survived. It is a sign that God is committed to my protection. Somebody say amen. You know, there are people who contract this disease and it's just like they are, they are coughing and they are just coughing. And in fact, you who has not contra contracted, you, you look sicker than them. They are just walking like nothing has touched them. And then after two weeks, they tell you, we have been cleared by the doctor. You tell them, was it really COVID or it was something else? Whereas others, they, they, they just contracted one day, second day, third day, as they are going. It is God telling you, I am committed. Your healing is, I am committed. I am committed. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but God is with me. It is a commitment of our God. May God show us sign of his commitment over our lives. Somebody clap to our Father and even give him praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, he is committed. That is the sign. You hear people have traveled in a bus. It has burned with fire. Everybody is dead except one person. It is a sign that I am committed. Everybody's business is going down. It's only your business that is, is continuing. It is a sign of God's commitment. People are closing. People are closing. But you are opening branches and branches and branches. It is a sign that he is committed. God is committed. Are we together, people of God? They said that some young men decided to go, to go out. They decided to go out to party. And the mother told the, 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 the I think the, the child, go with, go with this Bible and they say, go with God or something. And, and she said, Wacha mungu wakai nyuma kwa trunk, kwa bute agari. And, and, and they left, they drove for party. After some time, the, girl, the car crashed, burned everywhere, destroyed everything except the boots where they had put God. God gave them a sign. I am committed to preserve a place if I am invited. May God show that is committed to our lives in this season. When things are bad elsewhere, may God show that is committed with us. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody say amen. Clap to their father. Every time there is a sign, every time he shows that sign, it indicates to us he's about to do something for our lives, to make us ready. Every time you see the sign of God around your life, Prepare for another thing. Every time you see the sign of God in your life, prepare for another thing. He speaks in the Bible and he tells them, when you see demons being cast by the finger of God, you need to know that day that the kingdom of God is at hand. Every time you see somebody has been delivered, prepare the kingdom of God, the presence of God. Your heaven is open. Go ahead and do the next thing. Every time you see a sick is healed in the midst of us, prepare. Know that God is about to do another thing. Every time you receive a sign uh, that you've gotten a job, a certain favor, prepare because God is doing another thing. God is in the business of doing the next thing. Every time. That's why Moses would always, if I found favor before your side, God, now show me your way. If I found favor before your side, God, now show me your glory. It is a sign. When he showed it this way, it is a sign that is there. It is a sign that is ready to do another thing. It is now open for me. That's why people like Abraham, when they were interceding for Lord, they would say, oh God, I have found favor before your side. Now allow me to ask you the next thing. Because I know every time God gives a sign, he is ready to do the next thing. Somebody say amen. If you have come today, it is a sign that he wants to do the next thing tomorrow. 
if you have been blessed today, it is a sign that another blessing is in the offing. It's an assurance. An assurance that get ready for bigger things. Get ready for greater things. Somebody clap to our Father and give him a better praise even as I'm about to wind up in the mighty name of Jesus. It's a God whose hand performs signs, wonders, and miracles. He does wonders, great wonders. Every time he does these wonders, he does things that surprises people. Whenever God does things, it has to surprise people. Let me tell you that. It, uh, it's not natural. It surprises. It surprises people. They see it and they are surprised. Even the beneficiaries of wonders, they are surprised. That's why it's called a wonder. It scares the enemy. The moment he does wonders, it scares the enemies. People who are jealous of you, people who hate you, people who don't like you, they get scared because of that wonder. Just one wonder and they are scattered. They are scared because they know, uh -uh, this man is set for the next level of blessing. Every time he, sh he shows us sign, it brings conviction. Wonders brings conviction. He performs wonders. Convictions come. People are surprised and they are running to see what thing has happened with this person. And in the process, they are convicted. If there is a wonder that happens in town, and that's why, that's why preachers that wants to manipulate people, they would fake a miracle. When they fake a miracle and they begin to sing, people run they are singing that miracle that has not happened. And in the process, they believe and they follow. When has the In Nairobi, you would hear those things. They, they would just fake a wonder. And people would throng that church the following Sunday. They believe because of the wonder. It brings conviction to the people. Is somebody with me here? It is so easy to bring your family member to church when God does wonders in your life. That's why you need to pray God to wonders and glorify your name even in this place. Every time he does wonders, that wonder strengthens people. It strengthens us. People get stronger and stronger every day, encouraged, delighted, happy, smiling because of wonder. He's a God of miracle. He stretches hand and does things that are impossible as an intervention two situations of man. I want us to make a short prayer and tell God, stretch your hand of miracles, signs and wonders over our lives with the intention, glorify your name and make people believe you. In Jesus' name, let us stand in his presence. Let us clap to him and then we stand in his presence. Give him a better praise, somebody. Hey, somebody celebrate our Father. Give him praise here. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Somebody, Lord, somebody praise him. Ah, somebody, you can praise him. Ah. Praise the Lord. You do miracles that are so great. Ah. You do wonders that are so great. Ah. Father, you are great. You are great. Somebody clap to him and declare that, Father, you are great. Ah. You do miracles that are so great. Ah. You do mighty wonders, my Father. Shake it that no one can do. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody clap to him. Ah. Ah, somebody put your hands together. Clap to our Father today. As you declare, make a declaration, Father. You do miracles. You do wonders. Ah. You give us signs, Jehovah Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. I pray for your people, my Father, that Lord, my God, by sign, assure us of your presence. By signs, assure us of your presence, Lord. I pray today, my Father, that by signs, assure us of your commitment, Jehovah. By signs, assure us of your commitment today, even in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray, my Father, that by sign, assure us, my Lord, that you are about to do a new thing uh, that will be ready Jehovah by signs Jehovah assure us my Lord uh, of the great thing that is about to happen somebody clap to him uh, give him praise uh, give him praise uh, for inhabiting the praises of his people in the mighty name of Jesus uh, I pray Lord uh, that do wonders my father things that surprise others uh, things that will surprise us uh, father I pray blessing that will surprise us uh, breakthrough that will surprise us uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, I pray today 
my father. Lord, uh, do wonders, my father. Things that will scare away our enemies, my father. Things that will scatter them. Uh, things that will make them run away because of the great wonder. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray today, my Lord. Uh, in Jesus mighty name uh, that my Lord uh, do wonders my father things in our lives uh, that will bring convictions to others uh, when they see us uh, they will believe in you when they see the blessing uh, they will trust you when they see the breakthrough they will accept you when they see the open door they will run to you they will say we want your God uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, I pray my father that do wonders my Lord uh, things that will give us strength uh, that will give them mankind strength uh, that Lord uh, will cause us to delight in you even in the mighty name of Jesus uh, Father I pray stretch your hand uh, do miracles of healing uh, do miracles of provision uh, do miracles Jehovah Lord uh, of favor open doors uh, do miracles my Lord uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, Lord this is our prayer this morning some we might clap to him and give him a better praise uh, hey a better praise church uh, let us end with a better praise. Uh, praise him, praise him, praise him. Uh, praise him in your heart. Uh, praise him in your spirit. Uh, praise him in your mind. Uh, praise him with your hand. Uh, praise him with your body. We praise you, Jehovah. We praise you in the highest. Uh, we praise you in the heaven. Uh, we praise you on the earth. Uh, we praise you in the land. Uh, we declare today that the name of the Lord uh, is praised. Uh, be exalted. Uh, you do miracles that are so great. Uh, you do wonders, Lord. Uh, you do mighty things, my Father. Shake Baba Santa release your side upon this generation, my Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. I bless you for coming. I bless those who are praying with us online. I bless everybody here. I bless our second service. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I decree the names of the Lord upon you. May the Lord stretch his hand perform miracles, signs and wonders upon our lives. May God show himself present in our lives, even in the mighty name of Jesus. He clapped to our Father. I welcome you for the second service for those who are willing to be around, for those who are going, we thank God for your coming. For those who you have time, you can attend our second service. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God Fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. I mean, thank you so much for coming. I sincerely love you. Thank you. I welcome you in the course of the week. I welcome you for the second service. I pray that God will be able to bless you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Amen. Thank you.